All right. So I believe this might be the last talk. So we got one more coming. I was gonna, so you can uh, let's just make sure it's working. So we've got one more coming, so you don't have long, long to go. But So for the next five minutes, I'm going to talk to you about Kubernetes API. I'm not sure this is working. Let me just switch this. Oh, it's working. Excellent. So next five minutes, I'm going to talk to you about Kubernetes API. If you don't want to listen, you can shut your eyes and imagining you're dreaming about Kubernetes API. So um, we've taken all these YAML files and applied to the Kubernetes clusters, and it's been quite easy. Uh, that's, that's what we think it is. Uh, my name is Salman Iqbal. I am a... Uh, let me just switch this because I think this is playing around. Give me a sec. Let's see. This is not a. Uh, it's not a rolling update. So yeah, there's a bit of downtime in this one. There you go. Let's go. Oh, the other way. Mirror it. Let's see. All right, here we go. Pretend none of that stuff happened. Hi, my name is Salman Iqbal. <laughs> I'm a solutions engineer up here, and I also work for Learn Kates as a trainer. Um, we take a YAML file and we submit that to the cluster. And what we want to do is, at the uh, on the other side, the request goes in to Kubernetes cluster in the control plane, and it's received by a component called the API server. And on the other side, the request gets persisted inside the database. But what actually happens, there's a, there's a bunch of uh, components that request has to go through. The first one being an authentication uh, component. In that, we, it's just checking, are you, uh, are you allowed to have access to this cluster? Uh, it, you need an external system to do that. If you are allowed access to the cluster, the request is then forwarded to the authorization con uh, component. And the authorization component is just checking, are you allowed to do what you're about to do? Uh, so, uh, can you create a uh, deployment that you're doing? And this is done using RBAC, so you uh, define that inside your Kubernetes cluster. And after that, this is, where the, uh, this is where the interesting parts start. There's a mutation admissions controller. When you submit the request to Kubernetes, it might be missing some default fields. The mutation admissions controller will attach those uh, requests, those default fields in there. For example, if you submitted a YAML file and it didn't include image pool policy, it will add that. Um, that's not the only field it adds. It goes through a bunch of checks to make sure it adds all the fields. Otherwise, it just rejects it and sends it back. And then after that, it is going to check if the YAML file, for example, a pod, does actually look like a pod. If it doesn't, rejects the request. And then after that, there's a validation admissions controller. So this is like, you know, let's say you submit a request, and do you want to create something in a namespace that doesn't exist? that gets rejected. That's not the only thing. It checks through a number of things in here. You can have a look at that. Uh, if there's not enough quotas, it might just reject that request. So the request will get rejected. Uh, one of the things about these controllers, uh, the mutations admission controller and validation admission controller, is that we can extend them. There's, there's webhooks in it. If you have heard of Istio, I'm pretty sure you've uh, seen this, uh, how it plugs into the mutations uh, admissions controller. It injects the sidecar container. And for validation webhook, think about policies. So if you have open policy agent, uh, you can define a bunch of policies that you ha the, the request has to pass through before it gets submitted to the cluster. For example, you only want to allow images that come from your private registry. And then some, there's some open policy agent is not the only one. There's a few other options. You can also write your own scripts if you wanted to. But these are pretty good projects. You should check them out if you want to. And after that, there's a few more things it does, and then persists, persists the information to the database. So in summary, what does actually happen? Well, uh, I don't want to go through everything, but you can see if any of these things if any of these things fail, the request will get rejected, and on the other side, it'll go ahead and persist it inside the database. I'm Salman Iqbal. Uh, check me, follow me on Twitter, uh, Learn K8. Uh, just check out. We got some great blogs on there. Uh, thanks all, and have a great week.